What's up? It's your boy DW bringing you tech, gadget, product reviews, and more. Today I want to do an update to the LaCroix Nano V2 remote and maybe some modifications that you can do to it to make it safer for you. So let's take a quick look at the uh, current remote. Uh, so we got two over here. Uh, one is a replacement, but let's talk about the original one first. I believe the original one is this one over here. Um, if you see my other video, you'll hear all the complaints I have on this remote. I really don't like it. It's uh, cheap, it's plasticky, and there's a lot of uh, problems that comes with it. So um, I got to replace them because uh, this one pretty much uh, it's uh, it barely works, and when it does work, I don't feel safe using it. Uh, so. The main problem is the power switch over here actually broke. It's uh, very gentle and sensitive right now. There's actually no uh, uh, clicking back and forth to tell on and off. And uh, partially if I push it a little bit, it can you know slightly crack or come off, right? And look, I'm pushing it to the right, right over here. And the left, it does not turn on uh, pretty much. You can see it just got bent, right? Over here, left and right. Right, it doesn't. Okay, so, so sometimes it turn on. Okay, and there it goes. Um, it officially cracked. Act officially came off, and this controller is still on. I don't know how I'm gonna turn this off. I'll probably just let the battery drain. Uh, but pretty much, uh, this was a safety issue. Uh, when I did hold it with green, I think a slight nudge to it will actually turn it off, so I didn't feel safe riding with this. Right. I did bring this issue up uh, with Alex from LaCroix, and I got a replace remote, remote which is over here. So uh, first thing, the uh, new replacement remote. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, a, it's probably a newer batch, but I'm not sure if there's a, any revisions to it. But the, um, the throttle's slightly different. Uh, looks... Around the same, I'll put these side by side, you can see it. All right, it looks pretty similar. Left one is the old one that's blinking, and the right one is the newer one. Uh, but the, the tension and the throw of the throttle is slightly different. The first one, the original one I had, it's super sensitive. I can just push it back and forth. Uh, the new one have a slightly more tension to it, so it pulls me back more and takes a little bit more strength which is nicer. I do enjoy this one a little bit more, but again, the travel distance from neutral to the uh, uh, the min and max point is very short, right? So that's still a problem. But the uh, tension here is a little bit better, so it gives me a little bit more control over the remote. Rather than the other one, I can easily just nudge it a little bit and it'll go max throttle or, or max braking, right? So that's one difference I know notice, even though they're both Nano V2s. Other than that, uh, both remotes seems identical. Um, so one fix I had was, I think, if you remember my complaint for the original remote I have over here that's still blinking, uh, that the power switch here tends to be extended pretty far out. You can see it's, uh, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty long over here. And, and when you're riding, if this rubs against your clothing, um, it can actually turn off the remote. That happened to me twice. On the uh, new remote, a tip I got from uh, someone in the NYC eboarding group was to actually use a nail clipper, and I clipped off um, most of the plastic that sticked out. So I'm trying to show you over here. I clipped it off, right? So only a little bit is sticking out. Um, you can even clip it all the way down, but then it just becomes more difficult to switch it on and off. So over here, um, I can still switch it on and off, right? Pull it on push it again it'll be off all right but um this hopefully a uh will give well not a fully fix but it'll be making it make it a little bit more difficult for the switch to accidentally go you know, on and off when you're actually riding or rubbing against uh, other clothing parts so that's a modification you can uh, do if you have a nano v2 remote and uh i recommend it just for safety also inside these remote controls, um, the battery in there is just uh, glued on, but it's not really that stable. I think if you use it quite a bit, if you shake it quite a bit, the battery does, does, and mine did come off. So what I had to do was actually open up the remote and pretty much wrapped uh, on the spot duct tape around it. And that's been working fine uh, with the old remote. Uh, with the new remote, I put electrical tape around it and 
and it held it together and that's been working fine also I think some people use um, different types of glue uh, that they can put on those are my uh, two tips for today um, is to nail clip the bottom power switch and also open it up and wrap some tape or even use some glue around the uh, uh, battery and the motherboard to stick them together so there's no disconnect and it's pretty easy to open there's actually just three screws in the back over here uh, other than that uh, how do I feel about this remote um, it's better now but it's still not my preferred remote I am still uh, looking out there for a good replacement in the future Oh, one more thing. In case you didn't know, uh, Nano V2 remotes need to be calibrated each time you use it and uh, pair up with the board. So in case uh, you didn't know, just want to do a quick tutorial on how to do that. It's very simple. Uh, before turning on the board, um, just have the remote by itself. Turn on the remote. Okay, once it's blinking like this, uh, it's on. Just quickly uh, tap it to max throttle up and max down. And that's it, you're calibrated. Now turn on your electric skateboard, um, and once it's paired, you'll see that this green light will become solid, and then you're all done. It's calibrated. It's very quick and simple, it takes around a few seconds. And uh, for the people that's having trouble pairing it up or saying that it might take a long time to pair up, try putting the remote uh, close to the ESC. I usually, uh, when I'm pairing this up, I'm actually doing it right next to my board and having this remote probably around six inches away from the ESC where the power switch is. So it makes it nice and quick. Okay guys, thanks for watching. This is just a short update and modifications to this remote. Hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys and hope to see you next time. As always, if you like this video, click the like button below. If you want to see more videos just like this one, hit the subscribe button. And as always, be safe and take care.